Mike, it's so great to have you here at Griffith Observatory. What brings you here tonight? Uh, I'm filming uh, uh, with the BBC about Planet Nine. And you call it Planet Nine or Planet X? I call it Planet Nine. I feel like Planet X it, it has been talked about for 150 years now, and it has this sort of semi-sorted reputation as being something that crazy people talk about. So we're, we're, we're trying to dissociate ourselves from all that history of Planet X and really give it a name that's descriptive, that's unique, that people will remember what we're talking about. So Planet Nine. So reassociate yourself with Ed Wood. Uh, it is, yes. Planet Nine from outer space. Exactly. So, uh, are you a ninth planet killer or a ninth planet birther? Can I be both? Yes, you can. I think you are both. <laughs> I, I think that's good. <laughs> and a few other discoveries, which I'm sure we'll talk about otherwise. So, um, are we sure this is a planet? Why are we calling this one a planet when some others don't fit the criteria? Oh, this one, this one is is definitely a planet. So, you know, we had all these arguments about Pluto. Is Pluto a planet or not? This is 5,000 times more massive than Pluto. This is, this is well beyond where we even have to worry about whether it's a planet or not. It's dominating this huge region of the solar system. It's a it's a it's a it's a major component of what's out there in our solar system. So it fits the cleared its orbit bill. It, it does. Um, uh, there's, it's very nice these days. Um, Jean-Luc Margot down at UCLA has done finally after all these years somebody has actually uh, made a nice mathematical description of what it means to clear an orbit, and it fits uh, well above his uh, his category of what it what it means. So this is no longer in the Kuiper Belt. It's not a Kuiper Belt. Is it an Oort cloud, or is it uh, some whole new region or population that we don't know about? It's, it's a whole new region. So it's well inside of the Oort cloud. The Oort cloud would be probably another 10 or uh, 20 times further still, but it's well outside of the Kuiper belt. It's, it's about 10 times further out than the, the Kuiper belt is. So it's this middle region of the solar system that we've never known anything about. And what does the existence of bodies in that region tell us about the formation? What's significant about this, other than it's cool, it's, it's Planet Nine, it's but... Cool, it's Planet Nine, but actually it's, uh, it's pretty exciting to think about something that's 10 times the mass of the Earth sitting out there beyond Neptune. And as, as soon as we realized how big it really was, um, Constantine Batygin, who's the, the, the uh, other professor at Caltech who I've been working with on this, he and I looked at each other, we're like, oh, we, we understand exactly where it came from. It makes perfect sense. We've even been talking about these sorts of things for a decade without realizing that we were talking about it. So we think what happened is that right around where Uranus and Neptune were forming, that this planet would have formed in the same place and about the same size as Uranus and Neptune. But it probably got too close to Saturn or to Jupiter and then got ejected out into the outer parts of the solar system and has just been sort of lurking out there ever since then. So this is something that astronomers have considered for a long time, just never considered what happens after the ejection happens. And that's in keeping with some of the dynamic modeling of the uh, major planets, the jet gas giants, is it not? Yeah, it's exactly right. So we have, we've been talking about ejected planets all this time and uh, have never really thought that they might still be around. So this is kind of an indulgent question, but I remember learning long ago there was a sharp edge to the outer boundary of the Kuiper Belt. Is that still true, and is that tied perhaps to this or other massive objects? It is still true. So the, the Kuiper Belt um, is, is, has a pretty sharp inner boundary at Neptune, not surprisingly, and a very sharp outer boundary about 50% further out there, and we still don't know why. This is one of the first questions I started trying to answer in the Kuiper Belt 15 years ago. I, I used to think that I, I thought I had a clue as to why it was. I thought it was because there was a planet out further. That was 20 years ago. Um, and we showed that that's not it. It's not a, it's not a planet a little bit further out or a little bit further out. So, so we weren't sure. I, we don't think that Planet Nine is responsible for that sharp outer edge. Uh, it, it's too far out for that, we think. Um, but it is something we're, we're looking at carefully right now. So now for the big question, how are we going to find it? Where, what's the observing strategy? What, what is, how are, where are you going to look? So we, we've actually started looking. We started looking about a year ago when we first realized that we were onto something and we, we, were, we were still refining where to look, but we started looking anyway. So what we've done so far is figured out its, its orbit. We know, we know the tilt of its orbit compared to the planets. We know where it's the closest. We know where it's the furthest. And what that means is that we, we literally know the path path across the sky. And so if you look up like right now, you can see it. The path goes across like this. It goes across Orion. It goes right about between Orion and Taurus, interestingly enough, and then down into the southern part of the sky uh, over here. And 
they've actually already ruled out most of the southern parts of the sky because that's where it would be closest to the sun and the brightest. And if it were that bright, we would have seen it already. So we think it's not there. So we actually think it's uh, at its most distant from the sun. And that puts it right right up here in, in Orion and Taurus, somewhere right up in there. So that's where we're looking most carefully. So with these out of the, out of the uh, uh, ecliptic plane planets, we're going to have, have to have a whole new astrology. I, I, yeah, it goes through a whole new set of constellations, so it's uh, it's going to be back to work for those <laughs> astrologers. Yeah, you have to be careful about the name because I have to figure out whether if it's in Taurus, whether I'm stubborn about love or I'm uh, stubborn about work. You know, this is very we important. Will, we will consult with you before that happens. <laughs> okay, well, uh, congratulations again. How did you feel when they finally said, you know, this is probably real? Did you feel you were onto something, or are you more trepidatious than that? I, it's a it's a combination of. Um, we are we we, we feel like the evidence is is really solid we see a pattern in the sky that we think can only be explained by this planet that pattern predicts other patterns that we also see in the sky that pattern predicts other patterns we also see in the sky so it feels really good and i still wake up in the middle of the night terrified that we might be wrong <laughs> well thank you again mike we are going to have you back at all space considered so why don't you say uh, hello and good night to our all space considered audience hello, and all space considered <laughs> and good night thanks good night thanks mike that was good thanks <laughs> okay